Okay, so I had to go change my shirt and make a selfie stick. If you're guessing if it's a stick with my phone duct tape to it, you are correct. It was weird, like, I had that shirt on and then all these dudes in like SUVs kept like driving by. And then some dude rolled up and was like, hey bro, you, you wanna go to the Capitol with me? Get in? And I'm like, no man, no, weird. All right, so let's get started on feeding the bees because it's a nice day and unfortunately it's been a very mild fall. So they've been eating a lot more food than they would generally eat. So we are gonna get the feeders ready. We need to work on production. I'm struggling at life. Okay, good. So, here we have some honey that I got this fall. It had, a lot of it was uncapped, and basically I had a lot of boxes on my bees, and not a lot of bees in the hive. So I didn't, it's like too much for them to protect and take care of, and I, so I just harvested and kept it, and I figured I'd feed it back when they need it. So, I think they need it. So, I guess we're go, this is the this is a top feeder. You can get these on Amazon. They're pretty cheap. I got like four or five of them things for I can't remember. It wasn't much. I like these because they go inside the hive. Um, a big problem with feeding this time of year is we're in a dearth, so there's no food sources or very little food sources. Definitely no nectar. So if the bees, if you have an open feeding source or like an entrance feeder. The other bees will start going to that hive and then eventually start robbing out that hive. So then bees start killing each other. It's just violence and chaos and trauma inducing and I don't recommend it. So to keep that from happening, I use interfeeders. And I made this little box out of some dumpster wood. Um, it's all sealed up. I do have a vent on the front just in case for whatever reason, I want to open it to let, like, if it's too hot or something like that. Um, but it's closed up for now. So we're gonna get started. I think it's a, a gallon feeder because this is pretty thick, and I don't know how much you're gonna eat right now because the temperatures aren't that high. Um, I'll probably just do like halfway with each. Mm, exciting. It is unbelievable the amount of work. It takes bees to produce honey like it just astonishes me like I think somebody said I heard somewhere like it's it takes 12 bees to produce one teaspoon of honey like, phew, so much work I mean they gotta bring in the nectar they gotta vomit out the nectar into their buddy's throat then he's gotta vomit it out into his buddy's throat and then they gotta put it in the cell and then they gotta dry it then they gotta cap it and then some jerk like me comes by and takes it hmm so anytime you're eating honey don't waste it. Eat it all. Like, don't be one of those people that got honey, puts it in a cabinet, lets it sit, and then it crystallizes, which is not bad, by the way. That's perfectly normal. You just warm it up, and it'll decrystallize. Real true honey will crystallize. That's normal. Don't ever throw it out. Think about the bees. All right, so we got one feeder done. Maha. Why do I feel like I'm hosting a child show on PBS? Does anybody else watch PBS? Like, the good PBS. It's got all weird now. Like, back in the day, it was great. You know, a little, little Mr. Rogers get you going, and then Reading Rainbow, and a uh, little Bob Ross to put you to sleep at nappy time. That, that, they, man, that was the days. But again, I loved it because I think we had, we had the old knob, for the TV, you know, and I think it had 13 buttons on 13 ch channels on it. We only take up like four or five, maybe six on a good day. But like, there was always something to watch. Now there's like 500 channels and it's all trash, you know? Uh, I'm gonna stop complaining about back when America was great. Mm. All right, let's, uh, before we do that, let's get the smoker rolling. 
do 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 We got us some some of that high quality Jeff Bezos Amazon paper going on here. Oh, just my uh, I'm gonna have to get an actual better stick for this. Because you know, kinda hard to see me. Always keep an axe nearby. Remember that, kids. And you definitely never want to ever cut wood and use axes and such without like good proper shoes on and safety glasses. And uh, I'm not forgetting anything. Gloves. You always want to have gloves. So safety first. All right. So, we got us some wood. We got us some high quality Jeff Bezos Amazon paper. Amazon paper is the best. I, I think this is the best part about beekeeping. Like, I don't know why I'm, like, so infatuated with the smoker. Like, it really shouldn't be this awesome. But it is. Put this up. It's so rude of me, you know? I'm really not taking my audience into the uh, account here. It's, I mean, selfish, you know? So is everybody having a good day? Everybody go to church, do a little... We're talking to God, get right, you know, let's, you know, we're in the end times. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm pretty certain my generation caused this and it's our fault. And I get it. You know, oops, our bad, sorry, everyone. went a little heavy on the Jeff Bezos paper. You always want a good hot smoker. I like to get it. like I don't need the smoker today, but it's always good to have in case like you know you run into some kind of problem in the hive and you know something simple turns into an event. So I always like it just to have it. take this stuff up and come back for you guys so I'll see you in a minute all right I got you guys set up by the hive and the bees are very much not happy right now like they are pretty pissed at me remember I said always keep an axe better put a little beekeeper hat on because they're gonna light me up little hive tool you always got to pry everything the, the bees put what they call propolis on things and it's basically like a glue made out of like tree sap and stuff it is so hard to break that stuff free sometimes especially if it's cold out like this cotton I would take this piece off because I don't want but I don't want today 
fact, I'm not going to because they've sealed it up around the bottom and I, I don't want them to get air coming in. Yeah, you can see they're, they're not pleasant. They am gonna scrape all their dead friends off of here though. I have smashed a lot of bees on it apparently. Oopsies. Okay. Let's get this on here. Now, I can't put these bees back on here because they'd be trapped. So I gotta get them off. All right, one hive done. I think y'all get the gist. It's not very exciting. One thing I will say, if you're like new to beekeeping um, and you're not totally comfortable around the bees, um, you should probably wear a suit and gloves. Uh, regardless, you're, you're going to get stung. Like if, especially with even, I get stung through the suit and through pants all the time. Um, you would definitely get stung a lot more. You don't have that stuff on. Um, so, you know, don't just, when you see people doing it without and you're new, don't do that until you're comfortable around the bees. My issue I've noticed a lot is when I have the gloves on, I can't feel the bees really good and I squash a lot. Like uh, pulling out frames and things, which we're, we will do someday, just not today because there's no reason to get in and open up the hive and disturb them because just, there's no reason to. I, I went in there about a week ago and I know the queens are in there. Everybody's living the, the best lives, you know. So, yeah. All right, so I guess what is next on the to-do list? There's a whole lot of to-dos and a whole lot of not want to do's. Actually, a whole lot of not want to do's and not very many to-do's. So, I guess I am going to go put my bee stuff away and I will be right back, which will be like in an instant for y'all.